Uh, but I want to talk narratives for a minute. And okay. even as of recently, uh, you you kind of created some controversy and, and and some people were upset with you. A lot of people agree with you. A lot of people didn't uh, recently about the Harriet Tubman film. Mm. Oh, um, yes. And I, you know, I, I've all often stated long ago, uh, and I did some spoken word pieces and stuff and caught some flack for it about how I don't ever want to see another fucking slave movie again. Uh, and I saw both sides of it. I see the importance of sharing our narrative of Harriet Tubman um, but even within this construct of what we call Hollywood and who who kind of ultimately writes the checks and, and kind of controls the the storytelling there there have been some things that have been left out fabricated uh, that I believe you had an issue with Absolutely. but then that goes back to us controlling our own narratives when I see a slave movie I only want to see us whooping ass. <laughs> that's, when I see it, that's what I want to see in a slave movie. Facts. I did a movie called but, 18... Go ahead. Oh, I was say, Django. Yeah. He it was, was fictional. Yeah, it was he was fictional. Was bananas, another, but then a lot of people yeah, had issues but, with that. He shouts out to my man Sam Jackson. Yeah. But. They had a coon in there and also with Django, the Django character kept getting permission from the white person in order to get revenge. So right, you right. got to look at the dynamic with that. Right. I did a movie called 1804 about the history of Haiti. Ah, yeah. That's the only revolution where revolution. slaves rose up and overthrew the government. That's Common the, win. Oh, yeah, the only time that <laughs> happened in history. Sac passe to yeah. my Haitian cats. Not a, yeah, <laughs> beautiful history. In my movie, I had them whooping all types of ass. <laughs> <laughs> and it's factual. Yeah, it was fact. That, that it's all happened. fact. I didn't make up nothing. Right. Everything was factual. The real history is there. Now, let's go back to the Harriet thing. Remember, whenever we talk about doing slave movies where there's victories with us, they have to sabotage it. Like our brother Nate Parker. Right. When he did Birth of a Nation, they sabotaged that movie. Yeah. They were calling it a flop. The movie made its money back. Yeah, yeah. So they were going out of their way to disparage him. Attacked him. Yeah. yeah. Because he did it on his own. Right. And how dare you, Negro. Yeah. So with this Harriet thing, it was so much disrespect connected to the film. There were some issues that many of us had with the lead actress because of some of the things she said to disparage foundational black Americans. But aside from that, aside from that, let's look at the politics of Hollywood. In the movie, they put a lot of stuff in there that was completely fabricated. Right. That movie had a fake character. They had a slave catcher who was black, played by my brother, Omar Dorsey. Good brother. And I had a conversation with him the other day about this thing because he's getting a lot of backlash. This character didn't exist, so the bad villain in this movie was the black guy who never really existed, and the savior ended up being the white slave owner. At the end of the movie, the black slave owner was about to shoot Harriet, and she was saved by the white slave master. Mm. That's garbage. It's disrespectful, and a lot of people are right for not supporting that movie. That movie flopped, and they're trying to pretend that it didn't flop. And what's interesting, a lot of the media publications, they were blaming me for the flop. They were putting out articles with my name, like, y'all stop listening to Tariq Nasheed, he's stupid, and all this stuff. But the community just wasn't feeling that movie, and they should not have supported that movie. Right. So we, we had a lot of issues. So with then, it. about because I've seen people say this, and you just touched on, uh, we were talking about how that mentality of uh, knocking someone else's success. Mm. Could this be uh, maybe uh, another, could someone use that or this situation as an example of maybe, oh, uh, Tariq was just, just a little jealous as a filmmaker or someone who, you know, he, he's shooting at, you know, we, we trying to tell our stories and then we, we hating on our own. Could that be perceived as this? Be no, because when we're talking about Harriet Tubman, we're talking about somebody who shares my lineage. I am a foundational black American. Right. I mean, I don't, I'm not an immigrant. I don't come from an immigrant background. So my blood flows through that lineage. Right. So we want respect on that. Right. I cannot go to a Nigeria or to Jamaica and disrespect people's lineage by putting a fake character in there that never existed doing something silly. Right. I would get run out of there. If right. I, when I did 1804, I went to Haiti. Right. If I put some fictional stuff in there that didn't exist or showed black people being saved by white people, they would have ran me out of Haiti. Right. So I showed the same respect 
to other people's cultures, they're going to have to show the same respect to foundational black Americans' cultures. Right. That movie was disrespectful. The way they were portraying Harriet, they were putting these fictional narratives in the film, they were having this this weird relationship with the slave owner. Even the actress, we just don't like the way they portrayed her. She's bucking her eyes, crying every five minutes. That that Harriet wasn't doing all that. Right. So I'm, I wanted Viola Davis to play that role. Right. I would love the story of Harriet to be told, but don't disrespect it. I right. have no problem with success. I love, I like Django. Birth of a Nation, I like that. Just putting respect on our history is very important. That's all it's, it is to me. Right. Now, you know, uh, Malcolm X was a, a believer in, uh, you know, controlling the media and, and getting in front of it and controlling our narratives and often say that if, you you know, if we're not careful, uh, we'll start, you know, praising our oppressor uh, and, and actually thinking, you know, we're the enemies the, the, when we're actually the people who are trying to help one another mm. all the way to where, you know, that was a testament of even one of the reasons why, he, you know, he was he was murdered yeah. and assassinated. He kind of he spoke it because he was just trying to better our community, uh, but was often attacked and villainized mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. in this media game. And we get villainized all the time for being outspoken. Yeah. Uh, specifically in this day of social media where now everyone's afraid to speak their mind because of cancel culture. Mm -hmm. uh, but being on both sides of it, because you've also been one of those people saying, we should support this, we shouldn't support this. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you, where do you find that balance and what to uh, debate and what to create discourse about and what to say, yo, we're not fucking with that mm -hmm. or now nah, we got to support that? You made a good point about Malcolm X. There's a show on FX Network, The Godfather of Harlem. Yeah. With Forrest Whitaker. Yeah. Brilliant show. Yeah. The best show on TV. Yeah, not getting as much respect it's and, not. and awareness as it should. This is the best show on television. Spend the extra $5 to get Epic. Epic, send me a check for promoting your ass. <laughs> but this show is excellent. Why is this show excellent? Because there's an authenticity to it. One of the people who was in Hidden Colors, James Small, who worked with Malcolm X, yeah. he's the consultant on this thing. Dope. So he makes sure ain't no bullshit going to be told. <laughs> right. Y'all ain't going to start lying. He's told me behind the scenes. They tried to give Malcolm a girlfriend. He's like, cut that bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Cut all that out. We ain't doing that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's staying on their bumper, making sure you're going to tell this thing authentically. You can add certain things to move the story along, but the basic core of who these people were, you're going to make sure that it's told correctly. As long as we're doing things that has integrity, that's being told correctly, that shows us in a positive light and not always being saved by someone in the dominant society, I can respect it. The problem is when we look at certain movies, especially these slave movies, the ones that are praised by the dominant society, there's always a white savior. Mm. Django, there was a white savior yeah. in there, remember? 12 years a slave, they crowbarred a white savior. Remember Brad Pitt's part? Yeah. Brad Pitt was the one who got um, the brother's information to his friend. So he yeah. was the savior in the movie. Right, right. All of these movies. That have, goes back to that white discomfort that makes them feel better. That gets them into the theater. And we're like, look, we there are there's the good one. Exactly. We, I'm like I'm like him. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> the Harriet movie. They show basically all of the white abolitionists helping Harriet in the movie. Right. So the whole narrative is slavery was bad, but all of us weren't bad, and some of those black guys were bad too. Right. That's a bullshit narrative that we had to call out. Yeah. You know? Nah, that's real. Yeah. 